Namaste everybody. Welcome to this practice today. Let's start off by just going through a few props that you need. You will need a strap, bolster. If you don't have a bolster, that's fine. You can use a cushion. And of course, the usual couple of bricks. If you don't have a couple of bricks, just something you can rest your hands upon if you need some support for your practice today. Okay. Today, and we did look at this yesterday, Manamaya Kosho, working through the koshas. These are from the yogic perspective. There are five layers. And we're working through the layers from the outer layer of the grosser kind of layers, if you like, the material body. That was the Anamaya Kosha. And then we looked at the breathing body, just that fits inside that, it's a more subtle layer. Yesterday we got to Manamaya Kosha, but there's a lot to say about Manamaya Kosha. It's the, the mental body. Um, it's a little bit more subtle than the breath, and it's the realm of thoughts and the mind, and then the feelings that get attached to that. I thought we'd spend another day on that. And um, because really, I would say that that is the crux of yoga. Um, Yoga's Chittas Vritti Nirodaha is the second yoga sutra in Patanjali's Yoga Sutra. And it gives the definition of yoga, which says that yoga is the stilling of the fluctuations of the mind. And it kind of gives us the, the kind of reason for practicing that we recognize that when we're in our heads a lot, that perhaps we suffer. And when that creates suffering, it creates stress. We get a little bit stressed out. So yoga is a way of just bringing some control to the mind space. And we use that through concentrating on our postures and through the breath. And also it's about kind of being aware and we start to become aware of what's going on in the mind space rather than the, the sort of unconscious mind and the subconscious conditioning governing us uh, beyond our choices. So as we work through the layers and we become a little bit more familiar, this is the self-realization process of yoga. So uh, we're visiting the Manamaya Kosha. It is the mental body. And um, I like this kind of definition from uh, Eckhart Tolle. He talks about the mind a lot. He says, thinking, the voice in the head, the incessant stream of involuntary and compulsive thinking and emotions that accompany it. He often talks about the mind as a separate entity. <laughs> um, sometimes we can think of it as another character so that we don't get too over identified with it because yoga is recognizing we're not just the mind and we're not just the body. We have all these different compartments. When we attend to all those parts equally, we can experience holistic health. And really that's what yoga is about, is pulling all of that together so that we can experience ourselves as complete and whole, not these kind of different separate parts that operate in different conditions, scenarios. So in essence, that's kind of what it's about. So in the physical practice today, we are gonna be focusing on our shoulders, neck, just paying attention to what's going on here and just maybe connecting the, the sort of, um, how the thoughts and the stress can just manifest in the body. The neck and the shoulders are classic areas. If you're feeling burdened, worried, you can feel a sense of heaviness, a kind of a cladding of tension that just sits on the body. So we really want to undo that and free that up. And we're gonna do that through our physical practice. Let's start off by taking a comfortable seat though first. In a position that's comfortable for you, upright. Connect to the rootedness, the grounding. Start to take some slow breaths in and out, just to settle. So we're going to inhale through the nose, exhale out through the mouth, and H A ha breath as you exhale.
And this HA breathing is a real antidote if you clench your jaw. This is where we store tension quite often around the jaw, around the neck, the face, the head, the shoulders. So in doing that H.A. Ha breathing, we start to peel away those layers, we start to relax, we soften, we let go. Now closing your eyes, if they're not already, just go inwards and start to visit these different layers of being. You can scroll through Manamaya Kosha, Anamaya Kosha rather, which is the food body, the physical body. And then the breathing body, the breath. Just notice how that is because there is a direct link between the quality of breath and our emotions, how we feel and how we think. There's a direct link between the breath and Manamaya Kosha. And we know this because when we're stressed, our breath becomes a little bit higher up, maybe a bit more anxious, faster, quicker. When we're relaxed, it's, it's open, it's slow, it's free, it's uninhibited, it's full, it's rich. And when we're happy, the same thing. When we're happy, our breath just flows without interruption, without holding the breath. So our emotions, our thoughts are expressed in the breath. And when we know this, when we notice the breath, we can kind of check in and see what's going on. It gives us a gauge to see where we are. So as you check in with yourself, just notice how you are today. How are you? Okay. So we're going to rest back on a bolster. You're going to lie on your back along the bolster or lie on a cushion. And this is, we're gonna start off by just getting in touch with the breath, freeing the breath up so that we have that for our practice. And it's also a way of um, sticking the shoulders a little bit. So I'm gonna rest across my bolster today. And this is to really start to open up the diaphragm. So if you're on a bolster, you'll just sit on the ground and let your spine roll back. Let your arms spread out to the sides and just settle in, palms are turning upwards to the sky. And start to take some very, very slow breaths. We're going to be here for about a minute or so. And when you breathe in, you can tune into the actual breathing mechanism slightly where the diaphragm spans the entire rib cage. It's a broad sheet of muscle. Every muscle in the body has the ability to be tight. It has the ability to be soft. When we're tense, the diaphragm can get quite tight. So as we actively, consciously start to slow down the breath, we already start to relax open and release that muscle. So when you breathe in, the diaphragm moves down towards the pelvic floor. As you exhale, it rises back up to assist the exhalation. And just tune into that action. And as you breathe in and out, you might like to infuse this idea of just breathing in a relaxed manner to connect to that relaxation within. And then just choose in, tune in to the physicality of the breath and notice how the ribs flare and how the intercostal muscles start to stretch. And there's just a little bit more space to breathe. And take one more slow breath, just like that. And then when you're ready, roll onto your side and make your way back up.
So I'm going to set my prop aside for later, for the Shavasana. And we're going to take hold of our belt. I don't know if I mentioned that, that we need a belt. Did I not mention that? Really sorry if I didn't. But we need a belt. So if you can just grab something. Um, so we'll do a little bit of shoulder opening with the belt. And I'm going to give you some options here with your knees. Um, firstly, you might want to pad them. And I'll also give you the option whether you curl your toes to give your feet a nice bit of stretch. Okay, that can be a little bit intense, but it's a really good thing to stretch the feet out. If at any point you need to untuck the feet, you can do and sit on the heels. That might be a little bit easier. We'll just wake up the legs, we'll wake up the body. Now bring the knees together. And um, as you um, sit on your heels, also just engage through the bundas and lift up a little so that you're supporting and lifting up through the crown. We're going to take the strap in uh, the inside the thumbs and forefingers and take your strap out to a V shape here. And it's a little bit like shoulder flossing. Inhale, reach the arms up as you breathe in. And the hands go back a little bit so you feel that stretch across your pectoralis. Exhale, bring the arms down. We're going to do that three more times. So that's one. Inhale, really lift and stretch, lengthen. Exhale, back down. And that's two, one more. That's three. Now uncurl your toes. I'm going to stand up onto the shins. Now when I say engage the, the bandhas, I mean mula bandha is lifting up into the, your pelvic floor is lifting. And then uddiyana bandha is pulling into the belly and hooking up, zipping up. Jaladvara harabandha is just with the uh, chin back a little. Now as you inhale, lift your arms all the way up. And as you exhale, bend the elbows, pull the strap apart a little bit without flaring the ribs so that you squeeze those shoulder blades. And then as you inhale, press back up. As you exhale, bring the strap back down. Good. We're going to repeat that a few more times. Good. Now allow your torso to remain completely still. It's literally, I forgot to bend the elbows there. It's literally just about keeping your alignment and moving the shoulders. Okay, we've got about three more. And just move along with the breath. We've got two more. You might even close your eyes for one so that you can really just start to feel into the shoulders. And sometimes because there's tension there, what can happen is that we connect to that tension. We feel it. So there's this saying that says we feel it to heal it. Now, as you inhale, raise the arms up. We'll do a little side bend to the left so that you can open the right side of the body. Your inhale brings you straight back to vertical. Your exhale will take you to the other side bend. And we'll just do that two more times each side. Now keeping awareness of your bandhas and lengthening through your tailbone will just really help to support you as you do this. So you can really just concentrate on the lateral stretch. Good. So this is the last side, opening up the left side of the body. And the inhale, come back to center. Exhale, sit down on your heels and just pause and just shake the hands out for a moment. We have got one more thing to do, but just relax your hands for a minute. Okay, good. So this time, curl your toes. We're going to do full circumduction of the shoulders. And I'll just do it from the side so that you'll be able to see. I'm going to inhale and lift the arms all the way up. Now you need to navigate your strap a little bit here. Exhale, take the arms straight back with the arms straight. Good. Inhale, lift the arms straight back up. Exhale, bring it back down. So I'm going to repeat that a few more times. Good. 
And the way to really help you in terms of keeping the arms straight, and you'll notice there might be a little bit of plunking, we'll just do two more, is to be able to turn the wrist so that you can control the length of, this, of your belt that you're holding in your hand. If you internally, uh, if you externally rotate the wrist, that's going to shorten the strap. We'll just do one more for that. And you'll notice probably that one side of your shoulder is a little bit tighter than the other. Okay, brilliant. So set your strap aside here. We're going to interlace the fingers, sitting down on your heels, interlace the fingers and stretch the palms forwards and pull your sternum back. Inhale, lift up the palms to the sky. Exhale, float the arms down. We're going to interlace the fingers again, the opposite forefinger in front. front. Inhale, press the palms away. So it's almost like you're doing a sort of air cat. Inhale, lift the arms up to the sky. Exhale, float the arms down. I'm going to come on to all fours. Come on to all fours. This is tabletop, neutral spine. We're going to thread the needle. So bring your knees underneath your hips on the inhale, reach your right arm up and maybe look at the palm to follow the gaze and try and lift the hand up towards the sky as far as you can. Take an extra breath there and then as you exhale, bring that right arm, spread it underneath the left arm and bring your right shoulder onto the ground and stretch those fingertips long. Reach your left fingertips forwards so you've got space in that left shoulder. Take a deep breath in. Close your eyes maybe and bring awareness to that space between the shoulder blades. Inhale, left arm lifts up towards the sky. Just wrap the arm around so that you can open up through that left shoulder. And then exhale, release the hand back down, come back onto all fours. Inhale, left arm lifts up towards the sky. Maybe follow the palm. Keep lifting, reaching, focusing your mind and your breath. And then as you exhale, Thread that arm underneath the right, settle your left shoulder down, stretch the right fingertips forwards and lengthen through the left fingertips. On your next inhalation, reach the right arm up towards the sky and just thread the arm behind you. Good, exhale, release that, come back onto all fours and a few cow cats here as you breathe in. Cat as you exhale and breathe out. Do two more like that. Inhale. And exhale. One more. Now a little bit of core work. Come into neutral spine. We did this the other day. So just do what feels comfortable for you. But we'll just try and do about three rounds. Tuck your toes. Really stretch out the soles of the feet. Push into the ground as you inhale, engage the bundles and float the knees up off the ground. Good. And then stretch your legs back as you exhale. So you're in a plank pose. You have to make your stride a bit longer. Breathe in here. Exhale, tap the knees down. Inhale, lift the knees up a little bit more, hugging the belly in. And as you exhale, straighten the legs. Breathe in, pushing into the ground. Exhale, tap the knees. Inhale, float them up. Exhale, straighten the legs into plank. Good, one more round, tap. Inhale, lift. Exhale, plank. Inhale, pause. Exhale, downward facing dog. And just settling into this, as you walk your feet on the spot a little bit, find your handprint and your footprint, and then just shake the head from side to side. No, no, no. So as we bring our mind into the practice, we're actually going to move our mind in this downward facing dog so we can really focus. So we're going to move our attention to the left palm and then slowly breathe in. Now bring your mind to the right foot as you exhale, slowly breathe out. Right hand, breathe in. Left foot, Breathe out. Both hands breathe in. Feel the earth, the hasta bandhas. Feet exhale. Good, really nice. Inhale, bend the knees. And as you exhale, start to walk towards your hands. 
hands to your shins, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way to stand. And then exhale, hands to the heart, pause there. Three sun salutations. Inhale, sweep the arms up and wide. You might look up your thumbs. Exhale, forward fold, belly button, good. Hands to your shins, inhale, halfway lift, top of the mat. Exhale, plank, top of the mat, inhale. Come all the way down as you exhale. As you come into your cobra, tip of the nose. Press back to downward facing dog. Look at the space between the toes. Keep your attention there, your eyes, your eye gaze, but bring your attention to your right hand and breathe in. Left foot, exhale. Left hand, inhale. Right foot, exhale. Both hands, breathe in. Both feet, exhale. Now, bend the knees as you inhale. You can hop, step, walk to the top of the front uh, mat. Hands to your shins, inhale, halfway lift. Exhaling forward. Inhale, you rise all the way to stand, look at the thumbs. Exhale, hands to the heart and just pause. So wherever our mind goes, our energy flows. So what we're doing here is focusing and directing our mind space to, to concentrate. Let's begin again, inhale, sweep the arms up and wide. So reach up nice and tall, look at the thumbs. Exhale, forward fold towards the navel. Hands to your shins, look at the top of the mat. Step back, plank, keep your gaze there. Inhale, plank. And as you exhale, you can do a chaturanga if you wish, or maybe all the way down. Cobra pose, tip of the nose. Press back to down dog, eyes between the toes, pause there. Bring your attention to your right hand, inhale. Attention to your left foot, exhale. Try and sink that heel down. Attention to your left hand, inhale. Attention to your right foot, exhale. Try and sink that heel down. Inhale, both palms. Exhale, both heels. Good. Bend the knees on the inhale. Hop, step, walk to the front as you exhale. Hands to your shins. Inhale, halfway lift. Tip of the nose. And as you exhale, look at your belly button. Fold. Inhale, rise. Thumbs. Exhale, hands to the heart. Just one more round. As you sweep the arms up and wide, finding your drishti, your gaze point. Exhale, forward fold, navel. Inhale, halfway lift nose, step back to plank, top of the mat. Pause here as you inhale. Maybe you come all the way down onto the belly if you wish. Lift your chest, cobra. Exhale, press back to downward facing dog. Now from this point, reach your right leg up and back and just lengthen it back, breathe in. And as you exhale, step your right foot forwards for Anjali Asana Low Lunge. I'm going to lift the arms all the way up to the sky. Very, very nice. Thread the thumbs and draw your hips back. And as you inhale, lift your sternum up towards the sky. As you exhale, let's come into a twist. The left hand comes down. I'm going to reach the right fingertips up towards the sky, picking up the left um, knee off the mat. So... If you need to, you can put your left hand onto a block. Now we're going to come up to rise in the twist, okay? So if you want to step your right foot forward just a tiny bit to get a little bit more grip on the mat. And then as you inhale, spin your left hand forwards and take your right hand back. So you're kind of in a reverse twist and your arms are in a kind of a cross shape. Now pause there, hug the belly in and breathe. Back leg is nice and straight. And as you exhale, spin back to face forward as you lift both arms up towards the sky. High crescent lunge. Take a breath there. Well done. Good. I know. It's a bit of a balancing act there. We're going to turn and ground the back heel and come into warrior two. So as you extend and expand the arms, just be very aware of what's behind you and what's in front of you. Root down through the feet, four corners. Lift up through the crown. That will help you to engage your bandhas. 
Let's reverse the warrior. We're going to straighten the front leg and lift the right arm up towards the sky. And as you exhale, spin down into a triangle. So we reach the right hand forwards. We bring the right hand beneath your knee and spin the left arm up towards the sky. Now we're going to explore the shoulders here a little bit. What can be really, really nice is to take the left arm around behind you and you might even be able to thread the fingers on the inner right thigh. And that's going to help you to really open up through the shoulders. Good. Take a deep breath in. Now, if you want a little bit more heat here, we're going to reach the right arm forwards and extend it there. So we're having to use a lot of leg power here, a lot of rooting down through the legs to extend forwards. Good. Now, if you want to increase that challenge and the heat, you're going to slide your left arm out and then bring the arms so they're parallel <laughs> to your torso. All right. So you're reaching here for three, for two. Well done. One. And then turn to look down at the mat, placing your palms there and step back to a plank pose. So your vinyasa, totally up to you, either knees down for a half a chaturanga if you wish, half a push up. Lift your chest to an upward facing dog, press back to downward facing dog. Good, just pausing there, we'll do the other side. So lift the left leg up as you inhale. Get nice and long, feel that movement and energy in the body. Set the left foot forwards, come into Anjani Asana, right shin down, lift the arms up. Thread the opposite thumb in front as you draw the hips back. Use the fingers to reach up to lift you into your little back bend here. And as you exhale, bring the right hand down. We come into our, our lunge twist. So pick up the back knee, straighten the back leg, and then turn and look up the left hand side. Very nice, take a deep breath in. So engage your bandhas. Now to come up, it's helpful to step the left, the right foot forwards a little. Now look forwards and that's gonna help your gaze. So where the eyes go, your energy will flow. And then you lift up, turning to look to the left. So your right arm is stretched out in front of you and the left arm behind you. It's quite a strong shoulder opener, I know. And then as you inhale, left arm comes down and forwards, reach up into your high crescent lunge. Picking up the back heel, that will help you to straighten the back leg. As you exhale, ground the back heel, and then just open up into your warrior two, Vira Bhadrasana. And as you press down through the feet, lift up through the crown. So that helps you to engage the bundles. Remember that if you feel like you're collapsing downwards. Okay. And then straighten the front leg, reverse your warrior, lift the left arm up and back. As you exhale, to reach forwards for your triangle. Good. You can soften that front knee. It doesn't have to be locked. That's for sure. We don't want it locked. And then as you reach the right arm up towards the sky, check in with your neck as well. Is your head happy to look all the way up? If the neck isn't, you look at the horizon. And we're going to slide that right arm behind us and then reach the left arm forwards. Good. Really press down through the feet as you now unwind the right arm. And then you are framing your ears with your arms. So a bit of core work here. Hold it here for three, for two, one. And then look down, plant the palms down. You're in your runner's lunge, step back, plank pose. Your vinyasa, take your time, move along with the breath. So keep your focus and your concentration good so it's really great to bring some focus and concentration so our mind can feel steady bright and alive it's not wandering here and it's not being distracted by anything else apart from your practice <laughs> okay bend the knees inhale exhale hop step walk hands to your shins inhale halfway lift exhaling fold Good, and then inhale, rise all the way to stand. Exhale, hands to the heart. Let's bring the toes and the heels together and sit down into our chair pose. Lift the arms, sit your hips back, weight in the heels, lift the hip points into the body. We're going to twist to the right, hook that elbow. Now revolve your ribs, you can feel a nice little twist here, reach the right arm up towards this guy. As you exhale, bring the palms together. Sit back in your heels. Inhale, rise to stand. Sit back down, ready for the other side. 
The right elbow hooks on the outside of the left knee. Lift the left arm up. You can almost lift your chest away as well. Press the palms together. Prayer. Inhale, rise. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And as you exhale, step back. Good, really nice now. Move through your vinyasa. We'll end up in downward facing dog. Now take a moment here to shorten your stride as you bring your hands back one hand print. We'll take a little twist. So as you breathe in, cross your left hand and grab hold of your right ankle and turn to look up at the right armpit. Exhale, replace that hand. Inhale, switch sides. Exhale, plant that right hand down. Very, very good. Now we're gonna reach the right leg up as you breathe in. Now get really, really long on that leg, but keep the pelvis level for now. Just bend the knees, you're getting a good quad stretch. Now we'll open up the hip, taking the left inner groin to the midline, and then see if you can step your right foot back, reaching up and back for your wild thing. Very nice, take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, we'll spin all the way back around. Good. Now step your right foot forwards, come into Anjani Asana, lift the arms up. Come directly into your twist, lift up the back knee, look up at the right hand thumb, and on your inhale, rise up into that twist. Right hand stretches behind you. Inhale, look forwards, high crescent. Exhale, transition into warrior two. So we just kind of speed it up a little bit, going through that, that sequence. Straighten the front leg, reverse your warrior. Exhale, come down into your triangle, lift the left arm up. Breathe in, exhale, wrap that left arm behind you, reach the right arm forwards, good. And then as you inhale, slide the left arm out and just hover here, good, really nice. Take a deep breath in. And this time we're gonna come into a wide-legged forward fold and pause, so you're spinning on the heel of the right foot, turning those toes inwards, walking those hands back, just hang here and let the crown reach down towards the ground. And I want you to imagine that you're emptying the thoughts out. Just focus on the breath. So the Upanishads, what we find there, it says when the thought waves are stilled, the seer experiences their own true splendor. Is it possible to experience your splendor even though you're hanging upside down? <laughs> when you inhale, lift your head, walk your hands forwards. A vinyasa, Let's take it to the top of the mat. You know you can move with your breath, you know what you're doing. Downward facing dog. Inhale, bend the knees. Exhale, hop to the top of the mat or step. Hands to your shins, inhale, halfway lift, exhale, Uttanasana, inhale, Utkatasana, sit down, chair, lift the arms. This time you twist to the left, inhale, arms open, exhale, palms in prayer, inhale, rise up to stand, sit down, chair, Utkatasana, Twist, left elbow on the outside of the right knee, palms in prayer. Inhale, right arm floats. Exhale, palms together. Inhale, rise. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, Ada Uttanasana. Step back, plank. Your Vinyasa. Back to your down dog as you exhale. Inhale, lift the left leg up. Keep that pelvis level, get long through that heel, bend the knee. Now lift up that hip, twist. And then you're gonna step the left foot back behind you and come into your Vashistasana variation. Exhale, spin back around, left leg lift, step it forwards. Anjani Asana, low lunge, reach the arms up. Exhale, right hand down, come into your twist straight away. Now get ready to pop back into your twist in the high lunge twist. So you're lifting the right arm forwards and the left arm back. Good. Inhale, high crescent. Exhale, warrior two, turn and ground the back heel. Straighten the front leg, reverse, inhale. Exhale, triangle pose. 
Left hand down, right arm up. Turn and look up at the right hand thumb. Take a deep breath in, pause. Reach the right fingertips up. Inhale, lift your left hand straight ahead of you. Good. Now we're gonna bind the arms behind us as we stand straight up. Turn your left toes to face the side of your mat. You're gonna come into a bound forward fold. It is um, something that we do is tend to hang out in the heels. So if you can, bring the weight forwards to the heels and also lift the inner arches. And then from here, you can really stretch your shoulders by taking the hands up towards the sky. Draw the chin inwards, bow down and fold here, hanging upside down. Stretch the shoulders, maybe close your eyes. Take one more slow deep breath in. And then exhale, release the hands down. Inhale, lift your chest. Walk the hands towards the top of the mat. And we're going to step back to plank. But this time we're going to come all the way down onto the mat. Straight down in one piece if you can. All knees first and go slow. Slower than you might like. <laughs> but with control, you have to focus, you have to concentrate. We're going to slide the forearms forwards. Sphinx. So this is a really lovely back bend that we inhabit here. Now firm up your legs, press down through the pubic bone, engage your bundles, and press the pads of the fingers down and look straight ahead of you. Just open your collarbones as though they are smiling. Press the big toes down and then breathe into the heart space. Now from here, we're gonna do a roll up. As you exhale, roll your belly into the back. Good, root the tailbone down, hold it at the top, breathe in. And then exhale, roll all the way down. We're gonna do two more. Inhale, you lift your chest, look forwards. Exhale, you roll up. Inhale, you pause. Exhale, you roll back down. Let's do one more like that. Now, next time you roll up, you have an option to tuck the toes here. So you're really hugging those inner elbows, but spreading your shoulder blades wide. Now, listen up. So you've got your toes tucked. We're going to let the head hang and look towards those toes. Now, lift your hips up high. So you're coming into a pyramid shape. Now, start to walk your feet forwards. And this is dolphin. You don't have to walk too far forwards in order to feel this forearm dog. Okay, it's also known as dolphin. Very, very nice. Now pausing here, letting your head hang and just shake it from side to side. No, no, no. Okay. Now we're going to lift up into a full down dog. So you can either do that with your elbows lifting at the same time or one at a time if that's easier. And then we'll alternate with the left forearm down, the right forearm down. We're going to lift the left forearm up, the right forearm up, down dog. Okay, reverse that right forearm down, left forearm down. And then you're going to lift it up again. Brilliant, well done. Now walk your hands back towards your feet. Catch hold of the elbows in the palms and just hang here. So we want to counter all of that strong kind of pose, that strength through the shoulders. Just relax it now, hang here, breathing, letting go. Okay, it's so quite strenuous. And then take your hands back behind you and stretch the arms up, lifting the belly off the thighs. And as you exhale, release the hands down and bring it back to your downward facing dog. Push into the hands as you reach your hips up and back. And just pause and feel into the energy around the shoulders. So that was quite shoulder strengthening in back, okay? So you'll feel that work that you did there. Pause and breathe. Good. And then from here, we're going to hop to the center of the mat and come to a squat. All right, great. <laughs> All right, so this is a balance in its own right, okay? And we might bring a little bit more challenge. Now, the first thing is we're going to reach our arms forwards, right? Now you're pressing the knees together, pushing down through the balls of the toes and lifting the bundles in and up. Great. And we'll take a twist to the left. We're going to bring the right hand to the outside 
of the knee and bring the left hand to your hip. So that's your first stage of your twist. <laughs> Squeeze the knees. Take the left arm back so you can increase your twist. Maybe you take the right arm forwards, but if that's too challenging, keep the hand there. Very nice. Now as you inhale, we're gonna lift both arms up, come back to center. Good, let's do the other side. We're gonna take the right hand to the hip, the uh, left hand to the outside of the knee. Maybe we reach the right arm back and the left arm forwards. Good, inhale, lift both arms up. Exhale, forward fold. It's a lot on the legs. So relax, let go of that effort. If you clenched your jaw, breathe in through the nose and exhale out through the mouth. <laughs> I know it's tough, right? So you're doing really, really well. Just let your head go, shake it, no, no, no. Now we're gonna come down to the squat. You have an option here. Either repeating what we just did in those Kramers, those stages of twist, but it will afford us, these movements actually will help us to come into an arm balance called side crow. <laughs> Now the first thing you would do, we could do this step by step just for fun, why not? Bring your left hand down, lean into the left fingertips and then cross your right elbow on the outside of the left knee. That is the first thing. So Maddie, you might not do this, just do the twist because it's a bit of weight on the hands. All right. And then with that bind, take your right fingertips onto the ground as you can see. Slide your left hand back Sorry if I'm not mirroring you for this. So that your left elbow is in contact with your left hip. Good. Now you're gonna lift the hips up a little bit. Walk the hands forward so the palms are flat and then shimmy your feet away from you, bending the elbows and leaning your head over until you can find a kind of a shelf-like position where that you can then balance your legs. Okay, I really ought to show you from the side so you can see. We do this gradually. Now, if you're feeling a little bit kind of, you know, it takes a bit of courage, you know, the head might pop down, but try not to lash it. You could bring it down, but that is the balance there on the back of the elbows. And that's our Paj, the, the customer side crow. Now, once you've had a go of that and you're happy with that, Come to kneel. <laughs> We've got the other side to do, I know. Interlace your fingers and just stretch the palms forwards. Lift the hands up towards the sky in a kind of mini back bend. And then take the hands behind you, interlace and with a forward fold. So reach the arms up and back and bow your head. So you can squeeze those shoulders as much as you want. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, just empty out all of that effort, let it go. And then as you inhale, release the hands back to the sacrum, lift your head up, hands in your lap, just pause, and we just get ready for the other side, all right? So you have the option of just staying in your squat twist. You don't have to take it further. I should also mention if you need a little kind of soft landing, just in case, this could give you a little bit more courage. So let's just start off together. You're in your squat, okay? So if you're doing your twist, then you can go ahead and do that. Otherwise, hook uh, your left elbow on the outside of the right knee. Extend the hand down, you find your purchase. Uh, then your right hand comes down, right elbow on the hip. You lift up a little bit, palms are flat. Lean into the palms and then start to hug those knees in together, lifting your feet up and you're in your arm balance. It's chaturanga armed because you have to bend the elbows to make a shelf life, shelf like <laughs> purchase for your knees and your hips to rest on. Okay, really, really good. Excellent. So let's just neutralize that coming into a child's pose if you've had enough of trying that. Reach your arms back, Head down and just breathe. So the hands do connect to the shoulders then. We had to use a framework of the arms to support the stability of that arm balance. Good. Take a deep breath in, just let it go. 
Feel like you're just empty and out, superfluous thoughts, worries, concerns, or comments, judgments. There they go. That's just the mind stuff. And then just come back to the breath. Very nice. When you're ready, inhale. Just gently roll yourself back up to kneel, squeezing the knees together, hugging the bundles back. Head comes up last. Eyes open and look forward with clarity, focus, and softness. Very, very good. Well done. Okay, we're going to do a really nice seated pose, and it's something we've done before called Crouch Asana, and it's called Heron's Pose. We're going to do a Heron's Pose twist and then a forward fold, and we'll come onto our backs. So, for this pose, um, there's a few options here for legs. And I'll show you two. Now, the first thing we want to do is extend the left leg forwards. I'll mirror you for this one. You're going to sit in between, uh, you're going to sit on the inside of your right heel. Now, if the knee doesn't like going back like this, that's fine. You lean into your left hip and take your right knee outwards, like you were doing a tree pose or Janusha Shasana. So that can be you here. Or it can be you here. Now, if you are taking that knee back and you need a lift or lift for your hips because you feel like you're rolling back, then take something underneath and you can place a cushion, which would give you a nice little uh, lift. But watch this knee. If the knee says no, change your position. Now, bend your left knee in towards you. You have an option here. You could use the, your bell or you can make a stirrup with your hands, which is what I'm going to do today. And then catch hold of the foot, lift it, and then extend the leg long. Great. So take your right hand to the outside of the foot, and we're going to turn to the left. Stretch your left arm out back behind you. Good. Come back to centre and take the inside of the foot, and this time we turn towards the right. Now let's repeat that so you can get into a flow. So hold the outer edge of your foot, left arm opens out into a twist. Come forward again and then open up to the right. Good. Now this time catch hold if you can, holding your strap, pulling it forwards or grabbing hold of your outer foot and try and then lift the leg up and press your shin towards your head, towards the head or on your head. <laughs> Depends if the leg is open and your hamstrings are open. Now plant your leg onto the ground, lift up through the hands. We're going to fold straight forwards and over that leg. If your right foot's on the inside of the left thigh, it's Janu Shishasana, head to knee. And just taking a couple more breaths just there. And you know, it's all about doing what your body is open to today not what you think you should be doing. Sometimes the mind wants to do a pose and it pushes the body and this is where we could get injuries. So just observe that and respect your body. Now we're gonna come out of the pose. If your foot was behind you, your right foot, lean into your left hip and just extend the legs forwards and just take a moment to be in Dandasana. Just pause and breathe. Lift up through the crown, root down through the sit bones. And just feel uh, your alignment here. We're going to do the other side. Now, sometimes we might have something going on in one knee, right? Um, and if you have that going on and the knee won't go back or the foot won't go back, then you'll bring the sole of the foot on the inseam. If the knee floats up, you might support it there, okay? So give yourself the support you need. And then when you're ready, we'll go into the other side of our pose. Bend the right knee. Make a little stirrup or use your strap. Extend the leg, the, the leg up and lift it. And then we'll take our twist towards the right. So the, you're going to hold the outside of the foot with the left hand. Now watch that the foot doesn't waver across the midline. You want to keep your alignment and then open up to the right twist. Exhale, come back to centre. Hold the inside of the foot. Inhale, open up to the left. Let's repeat that one more time so we can feel that flow of the twist. Good, come to center and then bring your shin towards your head 
as far as you can, no force, the knee can be bent a little bit here, maybe you tap the shin, maybe you don't, it really doesn't matter. And then come upright and just let your foot come down, your leg come down, lift both arms up towards the sky. So as you lift up, roll over, so just fold over that leg. You can take your time to get down low if your hamstrings are tight. You can point the toes, you can bend the knee a little bit. Wherever you get to, just pause and breathe and let the mind be quiet. This forward folding in yoga, it turns the mind inwards to an aspect, a state of being known as Pratyahara. Pratyahara means to turn our senses inwards particularly if you have your eyes closed. It's possible then to shut out uh, distractions. When we turn inwards, we're able to listen in a little bit more. We can feel the body. We can listen to the messages. We know if we're harming ourselves and then we can adjust our practice accordingly. Inhale, walk the hands back, lift your head. Lean into that right hip, extend the left leg forwards and come back to Dandasana. Pause, breathe. Okay, really nice. All right, so just one last thing. There is an option here to come into Vashistasana sideways um, balance here. You have that option to do that if you want to. We're going to start off by lifting the arms up. And then we're going to turn towards the left and bring our hands so that they're parallel to um, our left thigh. You have an option. You can stay in the twist here and just enjoy that. Or you can roll onto the outer edge of your left foot, bringing your hands forwards. And then your left fingertips face backwards. Lift your hips up high and you can reach the right arm up to the sky. You're in Vashistasana. Okay, side plank. So you could have the foot forwards here if that helps you to balance. You can stack the foot, you can lift the leg up, maybe you catch hold of the toes. They're all options, maybe the foot's behind. So just pause and take one more breath, which will, with whatever you're choosing. Good, nice. And then we're gonna come back down. So maybe you bring the right hand down, sit your hips down, come back to Dandasana. Stretch the arms forwards interlacing the hands rather and lift the arms up towards the sky as you exhale turn to the right plant your hands so they're parallel to the mat right fingertips face back and if you're ready we start to roll on the outer edge of the right foot pressing into that right hand stacking the feet and lifting the left arm up towards the sky taking any variation that you want from here so totally up to you maybe you touch big toe maybe you don't it really doesn't matter we're going to come sit back down as you exhale, thread the fingers together, interlace and press the palms away and lift the arms up towards the sky. From here, bring the palms together, bring the hands into Anjali Mudra at the heart. Take a deep breath in, in your Dandasana, peeling those big toes out and pressing the backs of the legs down onto the mat. As you pause, close your eyes and feel the hands here. Just take a moment of appreciation and gratitude for your practice. And if you want to work with a bit of core, you can stretch the arms forwards and then roll all the way onto your back, taking your time or leaving the hands to your heart as you wish. Arriving on your back. And then bending your knees when you're ready. And we're just going to pause here taking a moment okay we're going to lift the hips up on the inhale interlace the hands beneath us for bridge pose Cur tucking your upper arm bones under that helps you to get a little bit deeper into the pose lift your sternum up, sternum up press your hands down Neck is free, so make sure you're not pressing on the back of the neck. So use the activation of your leg muscles to support this bridge pose. And we'll stay for two more breaths. Now 
As you inhale, slide the hands out. As you exhale, roll your spine down. Now you have an option to repeat that again if you want. If you want to go a little bit further in your back bend, this will be wheel pose where you take the hands and you face them, fingertips in towards the shoulders, elbows are pointing up towards the sky. If this feels new to you and you think, how am I going to get up into my wheel? You can start off by just lifting the hips and the elbows are pointing up to the sky. That would be the first stage of this pose. Good. To come up, you really need your heels close into the bum. You would press into the hands, into the feet, and you would lift your hips up, maybe coming to the top of the hip. But I would really, really go easy with this. Maybe the heels are down. Top of the head down, back of the head, look up at the sky, hug the knees in. It's a strong pose, so a lot going on in the hands, in the legs. I actually haven't done that for a long time, so yeah, it's not easy. If not, you're just in your bridge pose, just enjoy that. When you're ready, you can come out of that, hug the knees in, and just rock a little bit from side to side. Quite a deep back bend the wheel. Rock from side to side, easing your back. Enjoy that massage on your back. As we come towards the end of our practice, see if you can bring a little smile to your face for all the good work that you've done so far, taking care of you, acknowledging that. So a lot of our yoga is about the attitude we bring in. And if we can bring a sense of gratitude and with that sort of positive attitude. It really just helps the body, mind, spirit. Great. There are no demands on the mind right now. All that's required of you now is relaxation and rest. So what we're going to do is prepare to go into our Shavasana. If you need any props to help you be warmer, more comfortable, then please gather them now. If you have that bolster, you can place it underneath your knees. If you prefer constructive rest with the knees remaining bent, you might take the feet a bit wider and then just let the knees drop in towards each other. And that's quite a nice way to be. If you have the luxury of a scarf or something over your eyes, this would be the moment. And this is a gorgeous thing to do in your Shavasana because it will really help you to turn inwards. That's what we want. We want our mind, our body, our emotions, our spirit to be all on the same page, all on this mat, nowhere else. So just be here now. Give yourself that time. Give yourself that moment where you can tr truly be here now, nowhere else. And I know it's habitual that when we stop still, the mind wants to start thinking. And if you find that impulse is there for you, strengthen your breath and just breathe a little deeper. And that will bring your mind back in. This is the training of yoga. Don't scupper, don't let it scupper your shavasana. <laughs> and just as you settle into your shavasana, I'd just like to read um, something from Nikolai Bachmann who did a translation of the Yoga Sutras. He says, make a change. Feel the heat of resistance melt away old habits and burn through ruinous conditioning, offer negative behavior into the fire of tapas and chart your course toward freedom. So 
actively relax your whole body, your face, your eyes, head, your mind, your jaw, your throat, your chest, your belly, and your back, your arms, all the joints in the body relax, hips, pelvis, legs, knees, shins and calves, ankles and feet and toes. Feel relaxation through your whole being and let yourself rest there. Bringing your awareness back to where you are. Gently introducing a little bit of movement back in. You might circle your hands and your feet.
When you're ready, hug your knees in towards your chest. Wrapping your arms around, give yourselves a hug. And gently rock from side to side. Easing your back and feeling how nice that is. Rolling onto your side, you can make your way up to sit. We'll close the practice together. Rest your hands at your heart space to connect into your heart. I love this quote from Ram Dass. He says, we aren't who we think we are. We aren't even the thinker. <laughs> we're more than the mind, we're more than the body. So bringing your attention into the heart space to your inner light. See that light, your essence shining brightly. Let it light the path in front of you, removing all obstacles in your way, uplifting your spirits and elevating you and all those around you too. Namaste. Well done for your practice today for sharing.